Hello and welcome to Pseudocode. Today we are going to talk about databases. In this video, we are going to cover different types of databases, what are the use cases and examples, the pros and cons of the same. So let's get started. If we go back to the visual metaphor of buildings that we have talked about and in the previous video we discussed how we can compare people to data. If people are like data in terms of buildings, then what could be databases? The way those buildings house people. For example, rooms in a hospital look different from rooms in a hotel. In a movie theater, uh, there are chairs lined up in front of the screen so that people can sit and watch a movie. In malls, there are big large spaces so that people can move around. Similarly, different databases depending on the property of data and the volume of data querying requirements uh, provide different features and the way to store data. So in this video, we are going to see how those different types of database provide and fulfill such requirements. Some popular type of databases are relational, non-relational, file type DBs, network DBs, etc. In this video, we are going to focus on relational and non-relational DBs. Non-relational DBs are again divided into multiple types like key value stores, column based uh, DBs, uh, document based DBs, search DBs, etc. So we will look into those examples as well. Relational DBs are the most popular ones. And here are the two factors that help you decide uh, whether you have to select a relational DB for your use case or not. Schema and asset properties. Let's talk about schema. Schema in relational DBs refers to how your data is going to be structured. So in relational DBs, you have tables and rows which store the data. So if your data can be represented in the form of tables and rows uh, while satisfying the property of relational DBs, like if your data is complex and it could be represented using relational tables easily, then you select uh, relational DBs. A classic example is employees data. So you have an employees table, a department table, an account table. So employees table is going to store the data of employees like name, age, phone number, uh, city, department ID, account ID, etc. Now this ID refers to the primary key or the unique ID which identifies every employee and department ID and account ID are foreign keys which identifies which department this employee belongs to and what is the account ID of this employee. So these are called foreign keys. The department table will have details like the name of the department, when it was started and other uh, details and account ID will have other details like balance and so on. Now, how schema constraints come into the picture? Employee data will have requirement that one employee has to belong to a department and that employee has to have an account as well. So department and account cannot be null. That is a schema constraint. And if your data can satisfy that and you know that, that this is going to be the structure of your data, we make the decision of selecting relation DBs. What are the benefits of this relational DBs or schema? One, you can uh, represent complex data easily using relational tables. Second, with the schema constraints, uh, you can ensure that uh, some uh, garbage data or null data doesn't get into your database because the schema constraint like department ID cannot be null, account ID cannot be null, will ensure that you don't have inconsistent data or bad data in your database. Talking about asset properties. If you don't know what are asset properties, I have included a link in the description, but still I'll cover basics of asset properties. So A in asset properties stands for atomicity. Atomicity means a transaction in a database either happens completely or doesn't happen at all. So for example, if you have to transfer money from one account to another account, the transaction should deduct money from one account and put money into the another account. But it should not happen that it deducted from one account and didn't update into the another account. So that is breaking the rule of atomicity. Relational DBs ensure that the, all the transactions are atomic. Either they happen completely or they don't happen at all. Second is consistency. Consistency means that at any given point of time, the state of the database will be consistent. It will not happen that if two reads are happening, if two requests are trying to read the account balance, one request gets the response as 500 and another gets the response as 400. This is not possible if the DB supports asset properties because your database is consistent. It will give the same value to both the requests. Then isolation. Isolation means 
the two transactions do not know about each other for example there is a read happening on the balance and at the si same time there is a write is also happening suppose when read is happening read will uh, read the older value like 500 until the write is completed and write will go and update that, that value to 600 if the read happens after write it will get 600 if the read happens before write it will get 500 read would not know about the write operation so this is called isolation then durability durability is a mechanism that database ensures whatever writes or updates are happening they are logged properly and all the details and the data is getting persisted into the disk storage so that is just a brief of asset properties now if you have to support your business requirements as per asset properties if you have the need for transactions or if you are building like a banking application which has a requirement for transactions then uh, and also if you have a fixed risk schema which is not uh, going to change in future as much you select relational dbs what are the things that relational dbs cannot support for example you have a certain kind of data in which this schema is not fixed you do not know what are the different columns or fields that could evolve as your product evolves and you're not sure that how your uh, uh, how the schema of your data is going to evolve in that case using relational dbs becomes a little difficult Although there are uh, ways to update columns and change the schema of the table, but if uh, when the table size grows and uh, the data set becomes huge, uh, it becomes increasingly complex to add new columns. And also when the data size grows and the queries require multiple properties to be fetched from different tables, the joins can become expensive. So that is the case when relational DBs uh, don't have show much performance as expected. Second part is scaling. In case of relational DBs, it is easy to store or scale vertically. We are going to discuss vertical uh, scaling or horizontal scaling in detail, but right now just understand vertical scaling means you can increase the storage of one machine. So suppose if you have a table that has say uh, 1 million rows, when you foresee that it is going to grow to 2 million rows, you can increase the memory of that machine. But in case of relational DBs, it becomes difficult to divide that table and put it on two different machines. There are ways to divide the table through application code, but it is difficult to uh, perform horizontal scaling in case of relational DBs. Now let's talk about non-relational DBs or sometimes known as NoSQL DBs. In such databases, the schema is not fixed and different types of non-relational DBs cater to different requirements. Let's first talk about key value stores. Key value stores have just uh, like a hash map. It will just have a key and a value. So suppose you have requirements like uh, you have a feature flag or you have certain discount or promotion or you want to enable certain feature in a certain city for your application. So these kind of values could be stored in key value stores. There are multiple other cases for key value stores like caching solutions are implemented using uh, key value stores. Some examples are uh, Redis, uh, DynamoDB, Memcache, etc. The benefit of key value stores is they are quite fast and they provide quick access because most of the data stores are in memory. Apart from uh, such kind of data like application related data or configuration related data, you can also store like request response into key value stores. Again, key value stores could be used in multiple caching solutions uh, which we will discuss in detail in the caching video next let's talk about document based databases document based databases are usually used when you are not sure of the schema or how the data and the fields different fields of data are going to evolve over time in such cases document based dbs are used so there is no fixed schema and one more important point for document dbs are they can support heavy reads and writes. So let's see how a document based DB looks like. Just like in relational DBs, we have uh, tables and rows. Document DBs have collections and documents. So you can think of documents as rows and collections like tables. The use cases like when you have to, for example, store a, a product details uh, like for an e-commerce website if you have to store product details for an item so you will have item name item id price availability tax etc some some details like that and you know that these details although are known but they can change over time also when 
querying such kind of data you would need all these properties at once in one query so you don't want to have uh, this different data in different tables and then make joins and uh, fetch the data so document dbs help you in decreasing that complexity where you can just simply fetch documents uh, from the database so when you have use cases like that the schema is not fixed you don't know how it is going to evolve over time you want that flexibility uh, of keeping dynamic data and also when you have uh, the use cases for heavy reads and writes in such cases document dbs are a choice let's take one more example to make it more clear suppose you have a relational db where you store user related data so you would have a user table where you have user id name city country the company he works for etc if you have to fetch all the user details you would have to make query to user table then city table country table and company table to fetch the details related to city country and company and also you have a requirement of saving a large amount of user data so this kind of case becomes complicated while using relational dbs on the other hand if you put all this information in a document db where you have user and city and country and id all that all these details which are fetched from different tables in case of relational db if these are fetched uh, if these are stored in the document db itself it it just have to fetch one document let's look at what are the downsides of uh, document based dbs first that you don't have schema so you might have uh, null values or empty values in your db uh, if uh, and you have to uh, you might have to handle that in your application code and second is uh, these uh, type of dbs do not provide asset transactions so sometimes the updates could become complex and you cannot ensure if the transaction is completed or not completed although you can handle that using application code but that facility is not provided by the db itself so to summarize some of the benefits uh, or the reasons to choose uh, document databases is they provide uh, they are highly scalable they provide sharding capabilities if you have dynamic data and you want that flexibility uh, that you need a schema less organization of your data also uh, such dbs provide special querying operations uh, aggregation queries that can help you to uh, fetch data as per the requirement when you have all these factors no sql dbs or document dbs uh, are one of the choices if you don't understand sharding or horizontal or vertical scaling as i said there are dedicated videos on this topic and we'll cover more about uh, db sharding in those videos now let's discuss what are column dbs or column wide stores column dbs are sort of a midway of relational dbs and document dbs in a way that there is sort of a fixed schema with tables and columns but these dbs do not support the asset transactions also such databases are used when you have a requirement of heavy reads some examples are event data or streaming data so if you use a music app you are continuously either liking the song or skipping over the song favoriting your song all those interactions that are doing have to be written and stored in dbs as event data to, so that uh, analytics could be run over them such kind of data uh, is stored in column dbs some other examples could be storing health tracking data or uh, storing data for iot devices where different sensors are deployed and sensors are sending data continuously within every 10 seconds or 30 seconds in all such use cases column dbs are used because they support a large number of heavy writes coming to the reads such dbs do not support huge number of reads but they do support a special kind of reads and the table structure is defined by the kind of queries you have to make for example the music app the queries will be you have to fetch user detail song detail you have to fetch uh, users that have liked a particular song and also you have to fetch the songs that are liked by a particular user so some tables in uh, column db could be then users songs users by liked songs and songs by users liked this design in column dbs is done uh, with respect to what kind of reads are required also column dbs are a good uh, supporter of distributed databases if you don't know what are distributed da databases we will have a dedicated video on distributed dbs where we will dig into more of this in detail some popular examples of column dbs are cassandra hbase scylla etc in the description i have linked companies which use these databases and some more examples and use cases so that you understand how different companies are using these dbs now let's talk about search databases whenever you interact with any application where you search for something like for booking a flight or for booking a movie or if you're purchasing an item on amazon all those full text search queries are supported by data stored in search databases for example if you're reading a book you usually have 
an index at the starting of the book you can find out where uh, every chapter can be accessed so suppose if you want to go to chapter 5 it will say okay go to page 237 so that's how you can easily access this page similarly the data against those queries uh, are, is stored in advanced indexes inside search databases so when you search for a particular item say post it there will be data saved in these indexes to support those search queries some example of search databases are elastic solar etc the important thing to note here is the data that is stored in search databases that is not the primary data store so if if you are uh, working with an e-commerce application the product catalog all the products and items will be stored in a primary database maybe a relational or a non-relational db and the results of search queries or the data on which frequent queries are executed that will be stored on search db and it will be refreshed as per the frequency of the queries some other use cases for data are uh, images and videos such a kind of data is stored usually on cloud uh, in amazon s3 or buckets uh, in case uh, someone is using gcp then there are large data sets or time series data where a lot of data has to be stored and analytics is run over that there are different kind of databases which cater to such needs all the details are included in the description so the types of dbs and different use cases that we have just discussed these are the most popular ones there are many more types of databases and there are many more use cases again i have included all of them in description if you are more curious about the same but the rules and the thumb rules that we have discussed here could be easily used whenever you are preparing for system design and when you are trying to build a, a large scale system however these cannot be used as strict rules in some cases it will be very easy for you to identify that certain requirement it could be fulfilled with a key value data store but in some cases when requirements are fuzzy and when you don't know how the data is going to evolve over time it might be a difficult decision to choose between a relational or a non relational db or a document or a column db in such cases usually people sit with team weigh all the pros and cons and then decide what is the choice that they have to go ahead with and it is also possible that uh, you might have chosen a relational db at certain point uh, in your product life cycle but 5 uh, years down the line or 10 years down the line when the uh, scale is huge and when the data is growing so fast you might have to migrate to other kind of databases big companies in some cases have to develop their in house database solutions to fulfill their requirements so there is no right or wrong answers here these were just some rules that you could use to select data Databases. So that was a short introduction to different types of databases and their use cases. In further videos, we are going to talk about different techniques of databases like replication, indexing, sharding, scaling, etc. Stay tuned for that. Again, for your reading, there are links in the descrip description. Please don't forget to check them out. And see you in the next video.